What's the word, y'all? I guess we got to talk about the Bulls again, huh? Boy, oh boy. And again, I'm assuming that 90% of y'all don't really care about the Bulls, but you like to see me uh, in pain. So thank you for that. Thank you for clicking on the video. The last time we made a Bulls-centric video, in that video I said, I'm done talking about them this season until they make a trade. Because there's no way in the world that they don't make a trade this year. And, and here, here we go. <laughs> they made zero trades. And we already went on a rant about this last video that you saw was a few days ago. We already went on a rant in the last five minutes about the Bulls making no trades. I'm not over that, but we're not going to rehash that. The trade deadline has passed, and the Bulls have not won the game. And now we look at the fact that we did not make any trades, whether it be to buy, to sell, or whatever, to, to move the needle in one way or another. We look back on that and say, dang, we probably should have did something, huh? And it's just infuriating to watch this team do the things that they do. Because listen, they went against the Indiana Pacers. Second time this month, if I'm not mistaken. Last time we played against them, TJ McConnell had Zach Levine in a, a torture chamber. He 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 dominated that man. Zach Levine had one of his worst games of his, not just of this season, of his career. Because TJ McConnell was all over the place. And in this one, you could tell Zach Levine um, made it a point to be like, nah, that's not happening again. The Bulls start off this game spectacular. They are about 20 points. And they lost. The first time they lost... Uh, blew a 20-point lead to the Indiana Pacers. There wasn't even a Tyrese Halliburton, which makes it even worse. But uh, All-Star Reese was back, which is cool for him. But f for me, as a Bulls fan, it's just terrible. And this is from Casey Johnson. The Bulls have blown leads of 24, 21, 21, 19, and 16. That is five games that they've blown. And when they were up by 15 or more points this season alone and Technically, we're past the halfway point, but we're not even at the all-star break just yet. And and this team looks defeated. This team looks demoralized. And and we knew. NBA NBA fans or, or Bulls fans knew. After that elite level first quarter, the second quarter came around. The pace went on the low mini run, and the lead was still like 16. And I'm seeing on my timeline, here we go again. Because we all saw it unfolding again. We have We have like... PTSD from these type of things and you just think that one day they'll close it out one day they'll close it out they never close it out and they lose another game when they're in the hunt the the power this is what Carney Shova said in the post not trading for anybody we see that a lot of the power went out west basically saying that the Brooklyn Nets sold at the deadline the Brooklyn Nets have won more games post deadline than we have and we've had the easier schedule of the two <laughs> yeah yeah, the, the, the powers have shifted. No, Miguel Bridges had 45 points today. The Bulls ain't got that right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's just frustrating. And this is going to be, I'm going to say this, but I don't know for sure. It feels like the last time we're going to talk about the Bulls this season. There's 24 more games. And again, I'm going to watch all 24 as I do. I'm going to put myself through this torture. But I have to make a video to get out my frustrations, to get out the frustrations of the fan base in general. There's a video on the Chicago Bulls subreddit, and I'm, I'm not going to play it for you because I don't know if the NBA or the Bulls are going to get upset about this. But it's a four and a half minute video of Billy Donovan in different post conferences saying the, God, the same thing. He's saying the same thing. We got to play with more intensity. We had to have competitiveness. And it's a four and a half minute video of him saying the same sentence over and over and over after losses. Like, I know I'm going to say there needs to be change, but we, we're not going to get it, Bulls fans. We're not going to get actual change until the legitimate the legitimate offseason. They're not going to fire Billy Donovan. They just signed an extension. They gave him an extension this offseason. They kept it on the low low. They kept it on the hush, y'all. We didn't find out that this man signed an extension until we was into this season. But he signed it five months ago, five months previously. So they're not about to fire this man. This is the this is the way of the Chicago Bulls. They keep people around for way too long. And I, I, I honestly do believe that he's lost the locker room. There's rumors about him and Zach Levine clashing after a few months ago. Zach Levine was benched in a game where he was having a terrible, terrible night. Zach Levine said, hey. I think I have, have showed the world that I deserve to be out there, even if I'm not having a good night. And I understand where Zach Levine is coming from, but that game specifically, he was killing us. And I even tweeted in that game, Billy, get Zach out the game. And Billy did. Like he like somebody was looking at my tweets, you know what I'm saying, on the side. No, he did. And it might have caused a ripple between their relationship. Today, Zach Levine played a, a phenomenal game for uh, what I want to say. Is it a 48 minute game, right? He played a phenomenal game for 45 minutes. And those last couple, because the, the, the Pacers are coming back, and there's no DeMar DeRose in this one, nobody else in the Bulls looks to do anything with the ball. He felt like he needed to be hero. And the last shot he attempted was the definition of hero ball. 
Shout out to Hero Ball, a series that I had executive produced, and it's coming back for y'all that, that's been waiting for. It's coming back very, very soon. Um, and he took a heavily contested bad shot. The defense was bad, and ultimately we blew another 20-point lead. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at this video. I forgot to mention one crucial, crucial part of this, and it's that the offense is awful. Which makes no sense. We have DeMar DeRose and Zach Levine and Vucevic. These are three supposed to be offensive juggernauts. And they can't score. They scored under 100 points in the, in the last two weeks. I think four different times. The defense, for the most part, this season has been solid. You know what I'm saying? I think they're top 10 in defense. But the offense is like 24th. What sense does that? that that's, now, that alone has to come down to coaching, right? But like, that, that has to be a coaching problem. That you have all of these these supreme offensive weapons and you still cannot score and, and anytime the bulls do anything bad or start losing you obviously my mentions are like some pacers fans are coming at like oh kenny ha, ha you know that's the way it works you know what i'm saying i've accepted that when my team loses the opposing fan base is gonna come into my mentions and talk trash that's fine i'm okay with that but the the, the stuff that sucks more is the uh, the bulls fans that are you know in this with me like kenny i don't even know what i want us to do and I swear I'm in the same exact boat as you. I'm in the same exact boat as you. Now that we now we know we can't do a thing this season, right? Whatever happens to that pick that's top four protected, so be it. I, I don't care about it. I mean, when the lottery happens and it says the seventh overall pick goes to the Orlando Magic by the way of the Chicago Bulls, I've accepted. I'm not even gonna be mad at it because we ain't getting Vic, we ain't getting school, whatever. Post that. What do the Bulls do to give hope again? Because right now, within the fan base. There is no hope. There's the, 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 the connector, our connecting piece, Lonzo Ball. We don't know anything about him. And he was the last grain of hope within the fan base. And I, I think a majority of us have come to the realization that he's just not going to play this season, whatever. Um, but he was one of the last pieces of hope. So if we could just hold it together till Zoe comes back, we'll go back on that great run. In reality, we all, I knew, I've been saying this since the beginning of the season, he was not coming back this year. So now we don't got that hope. We didn't make any trades to the deadline. So many of us are prepared for this this off season to be like oh Ayo Sumo, chicago's very own he's probably gonna be on a different team kobe white who's been having a phenomenal season off the bench he's probably gonna be on a different team vucevic oh we gonna extend Vuce. we might see a, a tweet in the next the next 48 hours no not that soon but the next couple weeks of the bulls extended vucevic because the deadline to get extended is like march whatever so then we're going to be committing again to, to to maybe not this core exactly between zach levine demar DeRozan, and vooch but Vooch in itself. And again, Vooch is not having a bad season. I think Vooch is having an underrated season because because we're always going to compare it to Franz Wagner, Wendell Carter, and that additional first-round pick that we gave up. You're always going to compare it to that. And he's not having an all-star season like the, the version of him we traded for, but he's undoubtedly having a better season than he was last season. So he's been good, but I don't want him back. We pigeonhole ourselves to the point we basically have to because Chicago Bulls don't go into the luxury tax. So if we let Vucevic walk, our center position for next season is somebody on a minimum. JaVale McGee, welcome to Chicago type stuff, you know? So we basically committed ourselves to mediocrity again. And, and that has been the definition of the Chicago Bulls post Derrick Rose ACL injury. That's just who we have been. And it's, obviously it sucks because I'm supporting this team, but it's not, it's not a unique feeling. You know, some of y'all watching this video that aren't Bulls fans are going through the exact same thing as me. We're like, for the entirety of the last five years, you've seen your team be mediocre. Not necessarily be bad, not necessarily be the worst team in the league, but just mediocre. We just like a 500 team. And listen, the Bulls not even close to 500 at this point. We're significantly under. <laughs> significantly under. Um, and overall, there's just really no hope. And, and that's a terrible place you want your fan base to be. You don't want it to be hopeless. There should always be some string of hope. And, and I think my last string of hope for my Chicago Bulls is Patrick Williams. You know, year three of his NBA career, year two was completely taken away from him. He, he played a handful of games after he got injured against the Knicks in the first two weeks. And then his rookie season, he had no, no training camp. I mean, he had no uh, summer league, anything like that. So I still have a lot of hope for Patrick Williams. Not that I think he's going to be the next Kawhi Leonard or he's going to be a superstar caliber player. But with him being 21 years old and showing flashes, I think last month in January was his best month as an NBA player as far as statistically goes. And then the reason why some people have lost hope is that February he's back to be in the passive, not doing enough type thing where he have eight points in one quarter then won't score again into the fourth, you know? So it's, it's ups and downs, but he's a young player with little experience he was a project when he got drafted you know what i'm saying so he's my last grain of hope and i still i see dalen terry get a minutes now so that's kind of cool but other than that i'm i'm counting down the days to 
something significant happens. And, and maybe the super unfortunate part is that since Carney Chauvis and Mark Eversley have committed to this core, they might be too stubborn to make the big move. DeMar DeRozan is going into the last year of his deal, and it's an extremely team-friendly deal. He's an all-star player for two years in a row here in Chicago. There's going to be teams that are, that are going to call about DeMar DeRozan. But unfortunately, you waiting until he's on the last year of his deal hindered some of the value that he's going to have. And he's an above 30-year-old player. So his value just on the daily basis is going down because he's getting closer and closer to hitting the, the wall where he won't be getting better or he just will start to plateau or get worse. Zach Levine has started to play better in the last couple months, but you you gave him 200 plus amps. And I know for sure there would be teams interested, but the value of him is not going to be, oh, we trade him for two-time All-Star Zach Levine. Like, I think that if we do end up trading Zach Levine this offseason, I guess it really depending on how his last couple months go of this season. Some Bulls fans or some people might look back on the train and be like, that's all we got for Zach Levine? Two-time All-Star? Average of 20, he averaged 27 points per game on amazing efficiency two seasons ago? That's all we got for him? We're trading away DeMar DeRozan, a two-time All-Star? That's all we got for him? And that's just hypothetical if they decide to make these deals. So that's just, just the way we are. Um, Chicago in general has been terrible for sports fans, bruh. The, the Bulls suck. The only saving grace is that Chicago Sky won a champ. Shout out to the to the WBA. They won a championship a couple years ago, but this offseason for the Sky has been awful. <laughs> we've we've lost Candace Parker. We lost we lost um uh Vandersloot. Um we made a trade recently though. Um and I'm I'm not I'm not gonna act like I'm a WBA a super fan or know a ton of stuff, but they did make a trade that I, I saw some some Sky fans that I follow really excited about but we we lost the core that helped us win a championship here the chicago white Sox is owned by the same people that's, that owns the chicago bulls and they don't want to spend no money we gave we gave ben Attendee a bunch of money he was the largest contract in chicago bulls history i was just playing mlb 23 and looking at the ratings we're bad in game we gave mike cleverger all of this money and he, potentially uh, allegedly he's he d domestically abused his spouse we don't want that here in Chicago. The Bears have hope with the first overall pick, and they have Justin Fields, who looked amazing in the second half of the season. We don't know if they're going to trade down that first round, first overall pick. I'm excited about that, potentially. Uh, the Cubs were buyers this offseason, so like Cody Bellinger is now in town, which will be fun. I'll, I'll be hitting up Wrigley. Um, the Chicago Fire, who I will be going to Fire games this year, they were one of the worst teams in the league last year. So, again... Here in Chicago, there's not a lot of hope amongst sports fans. And they ain't even mentioned the Blackhawks are one of the worst teams in their their uh, league as well. We just all struggling. We just all struggling. And the last year Bulls made us think that, hey, maybe Chicago's a sports city is back. It's not. And it sucks.